Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Lipids that are synthesized in the liver or absorbed in the intestine must be transported to various organs or tissues to accomplish their functions. Lipids are insoluble in water and they have to be transported in the blood by forming a complex with proteins to form what are known as lipoproteins. Today's my presentation is highlighting the following aspects of lipoproteins. General structure of lipoproteins, different lipoproteins, composition of lipoproteins, separation of lipoproteins, functions of apolipoproteins and finally the functions of lipoproteins. To begin with general structure of lipoproteins. Lipoproteins are complex lipids, structurally spherical macromolecules. They are made up of lipids and proteins. The lipids and proteins are held together by non-covalent interaction. Major lipids which are present in lipoproteins are triacylglycerol or triglyceride, cholesterol, cholesterol esters and phospholipids. Protein portion is called apoprotein or apolipoproteins. Lipoproteins in general it helps in solubilization of lipids as well as it helps in a transport of lipids. As we know Lipoprotein is a spherical macromolecule. It has a central neutral lipid core and peripheral layer or outer shell. The central lipid core which is neutral is made up of triacylglycerol and cholesterol esters. Outer shell consists of monolayer of free cholesterol and uh, phospholipids. And the arrangement of free cholesterol or phospholipids is in such a way that their polar groups are oriented on the outer surface and non-polar groups are towards the uh, central neutral lipid core. The lipoprotein has also got a protein portion which is known as the apoprotein or a apolipoprotein. Some of these apoproteins or apolipoproteins are embedded in the layer and they are known as integral apolipoprotein, for example, apoB100. Whereas peripheral apolipoproteins are present on the outer shell or outer surface of the outer shell of a lipoprotein for example, ApoD. To summarize the structure of a lipoprotein, they are spherical macromolecules, they are complex lipids, central neutral lipid core is made up of triacylglycerol and cholesterol ester, peripheral layer is made up of phospholipids and cholesterol. The proteins which are present in lipoproteins is of two types integral apoproteins or peripheral apoproteins. Now, which are the different lipoproteins that are present in our body? There are four major lipoproteins which are present in the human system. They are chylomicrons, very low density lipoproteins or VLDL, 
low density lipoprotein or LDL and high density lipoprotein or HDL. Now, these different lipoproteins, they differ with respect to their site of synthesis, composition, electrophoretic mobility, size, density, different apoproteins which are present in them, diameter and finally with respect to their function. To begin with, the site of synthesis, chylomicrons are synthesized in the intestine, very low density lipoprotein or VLDL is synthesized in the liver, LDL or low density lipoprotein it is synthesized from VLDL in the blood and HDL or high density lipoprotein is partly synthesized in the liver and partly synthesized in the intestine. As we know, the composition of lipoproteins differ with respect to different lipoproteins. When we are referring to composition, it is mainly the composition pertaining to lipids and a proteins. Lipoprotein chylomicron is richest in lipids, 98 percent of it is made up of lipids and protein contributes only a 2 percent. Now, among the lipids, chylomicron is richest in triacylglycerol or triglyceride, whereas very low density lipoprotein, it has 95 percent of it is made up of lipids and only 5 percent is contributed by a proteins. Though VLDL is also richer in triacylglycerol, the percentage of triacylglycerol is much lesser compared to that of chylomicrons. Low density lipoprotein or LDL has 80 percent lipids and 20 percent proteins. Now, among the lipids, LDL is richest in cholesterol and cholesterol esters, whereas high density lipoprotein or HDL, it has almost equal amount of lipids and a proteins. So, to summarize, a lipoprotein with highest amount of lipids is chylomicron, lipoprotein with highest percentage of triacylglycerol is again chylomicron lipoprotein with high amount of cholesterol and cholesterol ester is low density lipoprotein or LDL. The lipoprotein with high concentration of proteins is HDL. How exactly these lipoproteins are separated? Now, there are two ways by which the lipoproteins can be separated. One, through the process of electrophoresis, whereas the second process is by ultra centrifugation. Now, separation of lipoproteins by electrophoresis, here the separation depends upon the charge by mass ratio. The separation here is carried out usually on agarose gel, a sample of serum is placed at the cathode, electricity is passed, usually the mobility is from a cathode to anode. After some time, the slide is stained and upon staining, four different bands will be obtained. These four bands are the one which moves fastest is the one which highest protein content, which is nothing but high density lipoprotein or HDL. This is also known as alpha lipoprotein because this band corresponds to alpha band in a protein electrophoresis. So, the one which moves fastest is alpha lipoprotein or HDL, following which is VLDL or very low density lipoprotein, which is known as a pre-beta lipoprotein. 
it is known as pre beta lipoprotein because this band is just a prior to the a beta band following which ldl or a beta lipoprotein because ldl or low density lipoprotein band corresponds to a beta fraction so it is known as a beta lipoprotein and the lipoprotein which migrates least or it almost remains at the origin is a chylomicron so the four bands with anode towards cathode or which fastest mobility to the least mobility are hdl or alpha lipoprotein vldl or pre beta lipoprotein ldl or beta lipoprotein and chylomicron which is the least one which almost remains at the origin the other way by which lipoproteins are separated is by ultra centrifugation now before no, moving on to the ultra centrifugation let us know about the size and density of the different lipoproteins if you look at the table the size as well as density of different lipoproteins vary with each other and also if you note the size and density are run in opposite direction chylomicron it has maximum diameter or its size is maximum but it is least dense followed by which very low density lipoprotein or vldl then ldl and finally hdl now if you look at the density in the increasing order of density it starts from chylomicron very low density lipoprotein low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein that is why the names hdl which stand for high density lipoproteins ldl stand for low density lipoprotein and vldl stand for very low density lipoprotein but if you look at the size the size is maximum for chylomicrons and it is least for high density lipoprotein now based on density when the serum is subjected to ultra centrifugation a four bands are obtained or four fractions are obtained the one with highest density will settles at the bottom and it is known as high density lipoprotein followed by low density lipoprotein or ldl then very low density lipoprotein or vldl and finally the chylomicrons so ultra centrifugation the separation mainly depends on a density four fractions or four bands are obtained with the lowest density to the highest it is chylomicron vldl ldl and hdl now we move on to a functions of apolipoproteins as we have told lipoproteins are made up of a proteins the protein portion is known as apoproteins or apolipoproteins there are two types of apoproteins integral apoproteins as well as a peripheral apoproteins these apoproteins are initially named according to alphabets a b c d e etc and each live apoprotein has its own function and different lipoproteins have got different apoproteins okay let us move on to the functions of the apoproteins some apoproteins functions like an activators of the enzymes some apoproteins acts like ligands whereas some apoproteins helps in the transfer of lipids apo c2 which is present mainly in chylomicron and vldl 
Now, this acts as an activator of the enzyme LPL or lipoprotein lipase. ApoA1, which is present mainly in HDL, it helps in the activation of the enzyme lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase or in short it is known as LCAT. Now these two are the apoproteins which acts as an activators of the enzymes. As I told, some apoproteins acts like ligands. For example, ApoB100 which is present in VLDL as well as in LDL. Now this ApoB100 helps in binding of the remnant VLDL or LDL to the receptor for its further metabolism. Whereas ApoE which is present in different ISO forms, now this ApoE helps in binding of chylomicron remnant or VLDL remnant especially to the liver during its uh, metabolic process. So in this way ApoB100 and ApoE it acts as ligands for its metabolism. Whereas ApoD or cholesterol ester transfer protein, now this ApoD it mainly helps rather it helps in the transfer of cholesterol ester from HDL to VLDL in exchange of triacylglycerol from VLDL to HDL. So in this way the functions of apolipoproteins are diverse. Some helps in the activation of the enzymes example ApoC2 and ApoA1 some helps acts as an ligands example ApoB100 and ApoE whereas some helps in exchange of lipids between the different lipoproteins. And finally the functions of lipoproteins. So when you are discussing about our functions of lipoproteins let us discuss briefly about metabolism of each of the lipoprotein and then the functions of each of the lipoprotein. So to begin with a chylomicron. Chylomicron as you know it is the one with highest concentration of triacylglycerols. It is the one with least density and upon electrophoresis it remains almost at the origin and when upon separation by ultra centrifugation it remains at the top. Now this chylomicron is synthesized as nascent chylomicron in the small intestine that is in the jejunum. The dietary triacylglycerol is incorporated into chylomicron and chylomicron when it is synthesized it is synthesized as nascent chylomicron and from the small intestinal mucosal cell where it is synthesized it is released first into the blood when the nascent chylomicrons when it is synthesized in the small intestinal mucosal cell first it is released by exocytosis into the lymphatics and then into the blood. So when it is released into the blood it is still known as nascent chylomicron and it is it has highest concentration of triacylglycerol and this triacylglycerol or TAG is from the diet. Now this nascent chylomicrons takes up ApoC2 and ApoE from HDL to become what is known as a mature chylomicron. Now this mature chylomicron it passes through a capillary endothelium of extrahepatic tissues especially the adipose tissue as and muscle. Now this extrahepatic tissues they have an enzyme called as lipoprotein lipase. 
this lipoprotein lipase and hydrolase. It needs APOC2 as an activator. So, when mature triacylglycerol passes through capillary endothelium of these extra hepatic tissues, APOC2 activates lipoprotein lipase. Now, lipoprotein lipase hydrolyzes the triacylglycerol to free fatty acid and glycerol and that free fatty acid is later on stored as triacylglycerol in extra hepatic tissue and glycerol is taken by a liver. The mature chylomicron after some time is converted to a remnant chylomicron. The difference between mature chylomicron and remnant chylomicron is that the size of the remnant chylomicron is smaller and the triacylglycerol concentration are much lesser than that of a mature chylomicron. Uh, finally, these mature chylomicron are taken up by a liver for its further metabolism. Now, the function of chylomicron, if you look at the diagram, you can clearly make out is to transport a dietary triglyceride to extra hepatic tissues or it is also known as to transport exogenous triacylglycerol to extra hepatic tissues. The next lipoprotein is nothing but VLDL or very low density lipoprotein. Now, this very low density lipoprotein is synthesized in the liver. It is also richer in lipids. Now, when it is synthesized, it is also synthesized as a nascent VLDL and this nascent VLDL as I told you is richer in triacylglycerol and this triacylglycerol comes from the one which is synthesized in the liver or it is endogenous triacylglycerol. Now, nascent VLDL upon exocytosis is released into the circulation as a nascent VLDL. Now, this nascent VLDL like chylomicron also takes up APOC2 and APOE from HDL to form what is known as a mature VLDL. Now, this mature VLDL passes through a capillary endothelium of extra hepatic tissues like adipose tissue or a muscle. As I told you, this capillary endothelium of extra hepatic tissues does contain an enzyme called as lipoprotein lipase or LPL. This LPL with the help of APOC2 which acts as an activator will act on the triacylglycerol of VLDL. The triacylglycerol is hydrolyzed to free fatty acid and glycerol and this free fatty acid later on esterified to triacylglycerol and it gets stored in the extra hepatic tissues and glycerol is taken up by the liver. The mature VLDL after the action of lipoprotein lipase will later on becomes a remnant VLDL. Remnant VLDL is also known as IDL or intermediate density lipoproteins. Again the difference, the remnant VLDL is much smaller in size compared to that of mature VLDL. Its density is more compared to that of mature VLDL and the triacylglycerol concentration is lesser than that of the mature VLDL. Now, this remnant VLDL or IDL is has got a two fates. One of the fates is it is taken up by the liver where it is further metabolized or this IDL or remnant VLDL is later on converted to low density lipoprotein or LDL in the blood. The function of VLDL is to transport endogenous triacylglycerol to extrahepatic tissues or 
to transport triacylglycerol that is synthesized in the liver to the extrahepatic tissues. LDL or low density lipoprotein, a lipoprotein with highest concentration of cholesterol and cholesterol ester is synthesized from VLDL in the blood. So, that means VLDL that is synthesized in the liver in the nascent form is released into the circulation, nascent VLDL is converted to mature VLDL, mature VLDL after the action of lipoprotein lipase forms remnant VLDL or IDL and remnant VLDL later on forms what is known as LDL or low density lipoprotein. LDL is also known as a beta lipoprotein. Now, this LDL is metabolized in the following way. There are present on the extrahepatic tissues a specific receptors. In fact, these receptors are highly specific which are known as LDL receptors. These receptors are highly specific for ApoB100. Now, LDL binds to LDL receptors, endocytosis takes place, a series of events occur and finally, the cholesterol and cholesterol esters are released into the extrahepatic tissues. These LDL receptors are also present in the liver. So, some amount of LDL is also taken up by the uh, liver. Now, this binding of LDL to the LDL receptors is highly specific a small change in the LDL receptor structure will lead to a very dread or very harmful condition. For example, there is a condition called as type 2 hyperlipoproteinemia, which is due to the deficiency of LDL receptors. The function of LDL is to transport endogenous cholesterol to extrahepatic tissues or in other words, LDL is concerned with the forward cholesterol transport. Now, LDL as you know, it is very harmful when its concentration increases, it might get deposited on the arterial walls leading to atherosclerosis, a thrombus formation and finally, if coronary arteries are involved, it might lead to a myocardial infarction. The next lipoprotein is high density lipoprotein or HDL. HDL is synthesized partly in the liver and partly in the small intestine. HDL is a lipoprotein with highest protein concentration. HDL is a lipoprotein which moves fastest during electrophoresis. Now, once it is synthesized as nascent HDL, it is in the discoidal or disc shaped. Now, this nascent HDL takes up cholesterol from the extrahepatic tissues. With the help of the enzyme LCAT or lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, this cholesterol is converted to a cholesterol ester. Slowly, nascent HDL will become a circular HDL3. The difference between nascent HDL and HDL3 is that the HDL3 has got more cholesterol ester concentration and the shape is also different from that of a nascent HDL. The ApoA1 which is present in HDL acts as an activator for LCAT. Now, HDL3 takes up some more cholesterol from the extrahepatic tissues. 
So slowly HDL3 becomes HDL2. Now the difference between HDL3 and HDL2 are the HDL2, the cholesterol ester concentration is much more compared to that of HDL3, though it is also a circular in shape. Now this HDL2 finally transfers its cholesterol and cholesterol ester to the liver. So in general, the function of high density lipoprotein or HDL is to transfer cholesterol from extra hepatic tissues to the liver or it is also known as a reverse cholesterol transport. Unlike LDL where it is considered as a forward cholesterol transport, the HDL functions in reverse cholesterol transport. In addition to that, HDL also donates APOC2 and APOE during the metabolism of chylomicron and VLDL. As we know, chylomicron and VLDL is synthesized as nascent chylomicron or nascent VLDL. So once it is released into the circulation, it becomes mature chylomicron or mature VLDL and during the process, high density lipoprotein or HDL donates APOC2 and APOE resulting in the maturation of chylomicron and VLDL. In this way, HDL acts as a reservoir of apoproteins. So finally, to summarize the functions of different lipoproteins, chylomicron synthesized in the liver will transport dietary triacylglycerol to extrahepatic tissues. VLDL synthesized in the liver will transport endogenous triacylglycerol to extrahepatic tissues. LDL formed in the blood from VLDL is concerned or will transport cholesterol and cholesterol ester to the extrahepatic tissues or it is involved in forward cholesterol transport. HDL or high density lipoprotein which is formed from intestine and liver helps in the transport of cholesterol from extrahepatic tissues to the liver or in other words it is involved in reverse cholesterol transport.